played a part in maintaining that for our, our mob too. I've never had that sense of, of um, shame. Well, I don't know what some people have with that. I never, I never grew up with that, you know, because at school we had a good teacher as well who taught us a lot about Indigenous um, culture. The language I'm talking, they understand because they've lived it for generations too. It don't matter what colour you are, you can still have that kind of connection and relationship. And, and that's what I value even with our, our friendship. And it's not about one mob and, and another mob doing their thing. It's, it's about two, two different mobs sharing together. And, you know, I, I think it's a perfect example of what we need to be doing as far as the future. People will say all kinds of things, but um, none of us are going to go away. We're, we're all here for good together. And so we need to go forward together and look what's going to be the best for generations for all our people. Old men said to me, you know, never forget the year Ali. Never forget your white brothers in whatever we're doing. And because that's it, we're, we're together now. However, however it started and however it pans out, we might not be able to change what happened, but we can have a say in and we can put things into place to change what's going to happen in the future. So that's Australians Together for me with Yaru. I think, I think what Kyle explained it there nicely a couple of days ago to me, he said, you know, there was, there was a white fella and it was the black fella. And now these days, it's, they try to make it the black fella and the white fella. But really, it's Jesus and fellas. <laughs> you know, we're, and that if you've got that at the head of your, of your organisation, you can't go wrong. Now, I believe in, uh, in Australian people and I believe in, in the church. I believe that the, the answers are there, the people are there, the resources are there, and um, we've got a great opportunity to be an example to the rest of the world of what it looks like to reach out to your brother, to reach out to your neighbour. Might, might be something like a cup of tea. Yeah. You know, I don't know how many cup of teas and yarns we've had together and those kind of things, and things grow out of those, those things. Sit down with one another and no agendas and no ulterior motives and wanting to, no yeah, one right. saving, not trying to save the world yeah. and trying to do that, but really just become mates again. I think there is, there is a, a change, a social and an, an, an awareness that is, there is a change on, in the wind and we're hopefully at the forefront of that. We don't see one another as ministries. No. <laughs> well, we don't. It's not just my ministry to come and talk to Sean about what a, and pray with him through whatever he's going through in his life. He doesn't see me as a poor black fellow that he has to no. help. Uh, it's, it's something that, look, we're mutually in it together and we're mates and whatever, if it rises or falls, we're still going to be mates. Yep. And, and, that's, and I think that kind of relationship is the key to it. Eh? And go out and have a cup of tea and like, Aboriginal people are happy to, they love to connect with people and we, we love to be together in a relationship. That's very yep. important to us. And, so I'll encourage it's you to do that. It's a highlight of the day, isn't it? Never. Yeah, have a cup of tea in the yarn. And Aboriginal people have been one of the most evangelised races on the face of the earth, I think, like, uh, over time. And, and people still have the same mentality to reach out to Aboriginal person is to go and evangelise them. Like, I, I think um, the church in Australia really needs to rethink that idea and uh, we don't need an evangelistic message anymore. We need a transformational um, relationship. And if we want to see that transformation happen um, in, our, in our nation, then it has to start with individuals and it has to start with mates. With no other agenda, but let's, let's get together and let's, um, let's explore things and share things the way that, that doesn't wipe out the race and take away everything else. As brothers and sisters and the family, the children of God, how are we going to go forward together in this nation? And, and that's where we need to start. And, and we start. Even that is transformational for people. We build it all ourselves, hence the missing, <laughs> part of a missing okay. finger, because um, machines sometimes get the better of you. Kyle's looking at a bird. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't see that bird much. He's, he's, he one flew into the factory the other day, a storm yeah. bird, yeah, pent yeah. up. Yeah, he doesn't seem much out of the bush. <laughs> Now I've got to do my bit again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs>
Well, welcome for today. Obviously, we're doing this special theme of Australians Together, which Rick has already started to introduce. And thank you so much for Keith sharing. It was so, it was so beautiful to see, see your heart and just listen to your stories. It was really, really special. And I don't know if you remember, but about four years ago in 2018, we did like a whole four-week series on Australians Together. And basically, it's all about us being truthful about the past, honest about where we're at today, but also how can we move forward? And I I love that video because it really captures the heart about how we can move forward together. And so today, for the rest of the the service, we're just going to hear from two different people's stories. Uh, We're going to hear from a lady called Carol Aikens and then from one of our Aboriginal elders in our community, um, Daryl Eads. And so I'll just invite Carol up. Um, Carol, I've known Carol for many, many years. She's been in our church for over 20 years, but went off to Melbourne for about eight. Her husband, Lindsay, and her were like spiritual parents to me when I first got, got first came to this church. So they're very special in my heart. And Carol has an amazing story. Um, so hopefully this will come on. So yeah, Carol. My story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't talk a lot about my history but um okay so um I'm the daughter of um Donna Nesta Milnes who were the principal and wife of an Aboriginal Bible college in Noingarup and I was born in Noingarup just down the road from where Daryl was born (laughs) he's getting up and talk to you later um and um my mum was born uh, by my uh actually in Melbourne but she grew up in Mount Margaret and Mount Margaret was a mission north of Kalgoorlie in Wongai country. So um, I spent the first uh, 13, 14 years of my life in Noongar country, uh, but my roots really are in Wongai country. And I went and lived in Leonora with Lindsay, my husband, after I was married for eight years. Well, as going to Melbourne. Yeah, you have. So. Um, I've heard some amazing stories about your upbringing and just how it was to actually be so relationally connected with the with the Noongar people. It was it was quite incredible hearing your stories and hearing the stories of your parents. And so, because you're so relationally connected, you got asked to do a very special thing. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So um, I'll just t- talk a little about uh, about Noongar up for a minute. Um, I I actually grew up in Noongar up. Um, and was unaware, really, of the fact that um, the Noongar language was being squashed um, because where I was growing up was actually on the Bible College and language was used quite a lot there, um, both Wongai and Noongar. Uh, we had Noongar students and they spoke fluent Noongar. So mm. I didn't <laughs> sort of know how bad things were for people out there. Well, I was aware of things not being good, but anyway, read language. Um, And also Mount Margaret, um, the language was encouraged there. They were encouraged to speak English and their language, and which was Wongai. Um, And Wilf Douglas, who um, Keith was referring to, was one of the missionaries. They translated uh, Nganadara um, up in uh, Warburton Ranges. So the language that... Keith first learnt um, was Nanadara, was it, or something else? Pijitinjara. <laughs> They're very similar. <laughs> <laughs> Pijitinjara, Nanadara, all of those ones. And then um, Wangata, and then he did uh, Nungao. Anyway, um, so language is a very important part of, of identity. And so, um, Anyway, my roots are closely connected. I knew Wilf Douglas and I knew all of those people. So I sort of grew up in the middle of all of that. Um, so my project, current project, is uh, about Mount Margaret. We're, we're doing, um, because I lived in uh, Leonora for a while, um, the children of Mount Margaret um, are reconnected with those, uh, the guys my age. Um, I was taken under the wing of... Um, people who were my mum's age because they were all her friends and they treated me like a daughter while I was up there and looked after me, really. Um, Anyway, um, they've come and they want to do, because it's 100 years since Mount Margaret started, they wanted to do a project. um, And it started off being 
a little half an hour thing um, <laughs> that was about Grandy and Grandad, my grandparents, um, Rod and Mizey Shank, um, and it's turned into uh, an hour and a half documentary on <laughs> um, called A Drop in a Bucket. Um, we're going to be launching it um, in probably about September in Perth, um, and we would love, love, love for people from this church to come. And it's a story of unity. It's a story of, um, yes, we're acknowledging what happened. No one's pretending um, bad things didn't happen. Um, but there were places where people were friends of the Aboriginal people and um, back in that time. And I believe Mount Margaret was one of those places that for such a time as this... Um, when there was a policy, a government policy, for Aboriginal people to die out. We can't, I can't even comprehend that people would think that now, but that was what the policy was. But for such a time as that, there were places that enabled Aboriginal people not only to survive, but to flourish. Mm, wow. Yeah. Thanks so much. That, yeah, it's, it's, it really is a special thing, yeah. and I hope we can actually see that video. Yeah. How do you feel like we can move forward together? Okay, so building forward, I mean, for me, I, I, as a missionary's kid, um, there's the downside, but there's also the upside. The downside is that we actually carry the burden of, of that legacy, and there are other missionaries' children in this congregation. I'm sure you know who they all are. I'm not the only one. Um, I'm also one of five kids and um, 17 grandchildren of R.S. Shank, <laughs> uh, Rod and Mizey Shank, um, and I feel like I represent them as well. Um, we actually have a really unique story. I didn't realise my childhood was unusual until I was an adult. Um, <laughs> anyway, going forward, um, I just believe that there is a legacy, there are legacies, there are places, there were places that um, did do the right thing as far as Aboriginal people were concerned. They created an environment, they created, um, um, they evangelised, and as I agree totally, there's no one more evangelised than Aboriginal people. Um, and moving together, that transformational thing of, of us working together, building on the legacy that we have and forging ahead, continuing to walk together. And I want to draw on um, Sir Doug Nichols. He said, we don't want to walk alone. We want to walk with you. Walk together. And I think that is the future. And Sir Doug Nichols said that, I don't know, about 30, 40 years ago. So I don't think you all know who he is. Mm. Mm. Thanks. Well, thank you so much, Carol. Well, <laughs> thank you for sharing. Um, I'm going to invite Daryl. Daryl Eads, um, I actually met him during our soul care course. He's like David Stanford's neighbour, but actually he's had a long history with Karawara Church. So, welcome. So, Daryl, can you tell us a little bit about your mob, where you're from and your, your early beginnings? So, um, you know, I've, my name's Daryl and I'm a Noongar um, from Mount Bark. I was born there. Um, Menang people, that's, that's sort of, that's that little part of Mount Barker, Albany, that, yeah, Menang, we were called the Menang tribe. And so, yeah, I was born in Mount Barker in, um, in 1970, born, uh, I had three brothers, three sisters. My, my dad died when I was only two and then for, to get a edu better education and to get away from that, you know, the, the difficulties of being a Noongar in a... In a, in a place like Mount Barker, which was a lot of segregation went on there with the Noongar people. So we moved to Perth and, um, yeah, this, you know, for education purposes. Yeah. What school did you go to when you were um, Initially, when, I went, when we moved to Perth, I went to Condola Primary School. And then mum was, well, we were part as, uh, of the uh, Girraween Baptist Church. And they initially started a, 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 a primary school there. Huh. And... Um, at the church, so I was one of the foundation founding students of that of the of the school, and then uh, as I finished my last three years of primary school at the Emmanuel Christian School, and then I went to Swan Christian High School. It was in Vic Park, then it moved out to Middle Swan, and yeah. Wow. So. 
So you have got a bit of an interesting story that resulted in you um, ending up at Karawara Church, our live streams Karawara Church. So how, yeah. did, how did that play out? Well, once I finished high school, see, with, with Noongar people, we were very communal. So growing up, there was always a big heap of people in, in, in whatever house we had. You know, it was always cousins and, you know, um, heaps of cousins, uncles, aunties. And once I finished school, I sort of strayed from the, you know, the teachings of, 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 of God. And, um, you know, got in with uh, a lot of family and that led to uh, you meeting other people. And eventually I ended up in uh, drugs and alcohol and, and um, that leads to a lot of brokenness. And I... I at my lowest point, I was I was so so broken, and I was. They say you know the term you used a lot. You you're in the gutter. Well, that's where I was, and um, I, at the time I was living in Kowarra, and my mum was up in Wilson, and um, so I went up to my mum's one night, and um, I was sitting in the lounge, and I just, I you know in other words in drug terms you lost the plot, so and I walked in, I went to speak to my mum, and I just looked at her laying there, and she she's so peaceful. Now mum. She'd been a Christian since the late 60s, early 70s. And um, so I walked in and I was just looking at her laying asleep and she's so peaceful. And something, I got this feeling, you know, this voice like, you can have that same peace as well. Go to that, ch that new church in Karawara. And um, I was thinking, oh, am I hearing things? <laughs> I knew about the church in Karawara. <laughs> I, I probably was hearing things, but it was a good thing. So I ended up going to the church in Karawara and I remember walking there and um, my, my, my way of thinking was I'll, I'll just go to this church for a couple of weeks, <laughs> get myself better and then I'll, be, I'll get back into it. I'll be back into the, you know, drinking the drugs and stuff. <laughs> but um, God had other plans and um, when, when I first got there I remember looking and I thought, oh, there's still white fellas here, you know. <laughs> and then but I went in and sat down and, and I do remember Darren Carruthers, he, he he was asking if anyone wanted to share and, you know, through the, through the way, the lifestyle that I was living, I, I was, felt a bit paranoid. And I, I, I thought, this bloke's looking at me. If he looks at me one more time, I'm out the door, you know. <laughs> but I never. I stuck around. And then maybe, you know, after a couple of weeks, I, just, I, I kept going. And then um, he, he, Darren Carruthers and Ben Chen, they, they were doing this Alpha course and... Um, so at the end of the church service, I, they said, does anyone want to do the Alpha course? And I just thought to myself, what am I doing? And so I went straight up and <laughs> talking to Darren. And I just thought I'd do a week or two of that as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how God works. I tell you what, he's, what he done in my life is just amazing. So I ended up doing the full seven weeks. And then I think it might have been a few months after that, or maybe a year after that, or going to the Kowara Church, Ben baptised me. And yeah. And, wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Initially, the boundaries of black and white, you know, that the devil puts in, in my mind, put in my mind, well, God's love transcends all that, you know. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was, it, was, it was amazing transformation. You know, I always wondered, how, how, is this how I'm going to die? You know, I'm just going to be, you know, stereotype, alcoholic, drug addict, and um, but that church, you know, the live streams in Kowarra, just it was it was it was a, it was a godsend for me personally, you know. And, mm. and and then not only through the transformation of me, but then my wife and she came from her family was there was no Christianity whatsoever. She'd never heard, of, you know. She heard of it. the only time they went to church was for a funeral or something. So now she's a Christian. She comes to church every Sunday. I've I've got seven daughters and one son. Half, half of them are Christians as well now, so it's amazing what the Lord's doing in my family. You know? It's just mind-blowing, yeah. actually. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. And it was amazing to do soul care here. You were, did you come here thinking you only do two weeks? <laughs> well, um, we were initially down for a shift, and um, we didn't know where, where God would take us, you know. Like I've been go, I go to Bentley Baptist Church now, that's my home church, and I was hoping to get a house around there somewhere, and <coughs> all of a sudden, my, my, my Alana gets offered this house up in Kensington. So we, yeah, well, we thought it was nice, we moved there. And then we're out the front one day, 
and um, this guy's walking past. So I happened to be Dave Stanford. <laughs> and um, he was around the corner from me. And we got chatting. And maybe a few weeks later, or a couple of months later, actually, I, I run into Dave again out the front and he, he told me about this soul care course that was happening. I just said, yeah, you know, I thought it was being polite. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll come along and do it. <laughs> and um, so I did. <laughs> and I think it went for eight weeks, eh, Dave? Yeah. So, um, look, that, that, this, in, when I first came to the Lord, I thought, yeah, going to church every Sunday, um, you know, reading my Bible. And you sort of get to that point where you, you, you just, you're in a routine, sort of. That soul care course, I'm telling you, uh, it, uh, that's, that's transformed me. That's, uh, that's, that's, it's amazing. What it's done, it's just opened me more up to God's love and, you know, God's way of living and, yeah, it was amazing. I just, you know, I'm, I'm not much of a reader, um, but I've got a soul care book and I read that from front to back <laughs> and, um, yeah, that was, it's just amazing, you know, amazing course. It just... Um, transform my way of thinking, you know, and how, how I, um, you know, usually I'd get up in the morning and the first thing I want to do is read my Bible, but just sit in peace and quiet with God and thanking him, you know. Mm. Yeah, it's amazing. Wow. Yeah. So how do you feel like we can move forward together as Australians? Um, you know, a lot of, a, a lot of uh, society, you know, is, is based around, like, when we look, when we see each other, it's colours. You know, what colour? You know, or what nationality? Or what language you speak? Being a Christian and understanding God's way, and that we're all created equally, and that His love transcends colour, language, culture. I believe, you know, it, it starts in the church. It will mm. reconciliation will start in the church, mm. and um, yeah, through God. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much, yeah. Daryl. What a, can we give him a big clap? Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. I think we've been very blessed to hear some incredible stories. Um, so I'm just going to lift up everyone in prayer. And we also want to just pray for this nation and also for the election that um, is coming up. So... Lord, I just thank you for what a blessing it was to hear the stories of, of Keith and Carol and Daryl, Lord, what amazing things you have done in all of their lives. And I love, Lord, how in the end they know that deep reconciliation and deep love for one another, it all happens in you because you have shown us the way to love one another. So, Lord, I just pray that you bless uh, Keith and Stephanie and their, and their church out in Belmont, Lord. Just make that church everything you want it to be. Bless all the Aboriginal people and the people from the other countries that come there, Lord. Just help it to just help them to have all the grace that they need to just do the work that you have called them to do in that area. Lord, bless Daryl and his whole family, Lord, and just his heart for the future and to want to be blessing the next generation, Lord. Just really lift him up, Lord, and pour out your spirit on that whole family. And Lord, we pray for Carol and her role for the anniversary of Mount Margaret. Lord, just really help that documentary to become everything you want it to be as well and really, really special and healing for that whole community. Lord, we lift up this nation to you, Lord. We thank you for all the different people in this nation, Lord, from all the different backgrounds, Lord, and we just pray that we all would move forward together. We lift up our Aboriginal, our First Nation brothers and sisters, and we do pray for your Holy Spirit to be poured out, Lord. There was prophetic words that said this would be the great south land of the Holy Spirit. We've sung about that today. So we just pray for a move of your spirit across this land, that you would do what none of us can do, Lord. What you've done in Daryl's life and Keith's life and my life, it's more than what we could ever have imagined. It's because you did it, Lord, and you have got a plan and a purpose for this nation and for all of our Indigenous brothers and sisters in this nation. We lift them up to you and we just pray, Father, that you make a way even when there seems a way, that your spirit is poured out in such a powerful way that they just people just come to you and they just find healing and freedom, Lord, just like Daryl has. Lord, we want to see that multiply and multiplied and multiplied across this nation. 
Lord, and we pray for this election, Lord. We pray that the most righteous people in each seat of parliament would be raised up. In each area, you would cause the most righteous person to be elected, Lord. Whatever party they're from, that the most righteous people would kind of come up to form the most righteous government. Lord, we we don't know the hearts of people, but you know the hearts of people. And so we pray, Father, for this election. We pray for a righteous government in this land. We pray for the God-chosen government of this land. We pray, Father, that you would cause the hearts of Australians to move towards your plans and purposes because you are sovereign over the media. You are sovereign over everything. You are sovereign, Lord. We pray that a God-appointed person, Lord, would just become the next Prime Minister and the God-appointed party, Lord, and the God-appointed person in every seat so that we would have a righteous government of all parties, of all, all, all people. We pray, Father, for you to really guide this election and just bring about your purposes, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.